no so one... you're creating a, a <laughs> really just a, a, a body of work representing a lot of non-Japanese. Not no, and, and Japanese people. And this, Japanese. It's, it's the expat community and the expat people community. that are involved in our community, which could be the guy that just got through cleaning up over here. If he speaks English, I don't care. I want them in here because they're the people that are involved in our lives. Mm. If it's in Japanese, I can do that, but there's so many people. It's just, that doesn't touch what we really do. And most of the foreigners here aren't like you, where they speak, read, and write the language. It's different, we, but a lot of the foreigners do. Not most, most of them don't, but a lot do. Mm. And, and a lot of them are very, very stealthy about it too. They're very quiet. They, they take on the Japanese persona, they don't say a thing. Right. And meanwhile, they read better than the Japanese do. Because <laughs> they put their whole heart into it. Fly under the radar. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Only one does, and they get mad every time they see David on TV. Shut up. <laughs> why do you gotta keep on, why don't you just shut up, David? Oh my God, that's funny you, you should know. say that. <laughs> I met him, are we recording? Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter, I that's not gonna be on. I met him, <laughs> you're gonna like this. You know him, obviously. He's a member him. here. He's a, I've oh, been known okay. him for a long time. So, David told me about dyeing his hair. He got tired of seeing Mormons take all the spotlight. When it used to be the two, it used to be David Spector, not David yeah. Spector. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know the other two. Yeah, 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 One's yeah. a lawyer and uh, the other guy right, right, was, right. was clowning. Dedicato. De dedicato. Dedicato. And um, um, uh, the other guy, the, the Kent, handsome guy. Kent. Kent Gilbert. Kent Gilbert. And Kent Delicat. And right. Kent Gilbert, I had on my, um, I taught his child. When he oh. had him at the ELC, because he's a lawyer, and I always told him I admire the. He's oh, a, Brett? Is it Brett? His son? Yeah, well, yeah, he's yeah, maybe got so. several. Right? I forget, yeah. but I, I don't remember. The lawyer. I said he never went with any of the playing around. Always stayed in a suit. Always sharp. If I were to do that, I said that's the only thing I'd do. You know, you know, enough clowns, enough. The Cirque du yeah, Soleil yeah. comes here every year. What do you need? <laughs> we don't need any more clowns. <laughs> okay, so. I was in college at ICU. And my first secretary, by the way, I got her from ICU. I lived in Mitaka, oh, Kamine interesting, Jaku, interesting. right down the street. Oh, really? I taught at ASIJ, Tofu. Oh, wow. I've been on your campus so Small much. Small world. Wow. Yes. Were you, you must have been a gymnast. I was a competitive gymnast. You're very tall for a yeah, gymnast. But I wasn't though. tall in high school. I started getting oh. my height once I got my first year in college, and then I got drafted. And I think. That gave me a little spurt. <laughs> I got drafted, and I listened to the Air Force. Oh, you got drafted? I was Vietnam. Was Vietnam, oh, 70, wow. 71, yeah. Did you go? I put, ironically, I put in for Vietnam. They said, the quota for your career field is filled, but we can give you Japan. I said, well, I'm ready to go here. Listen, what do I have to do? They said, you have to extend for um, eight months because you only have a year and four months. You need two years. <laughs> give me the paperwork. Let's do this. Wow. And boom, and I went to Yokota. Wow. So, I... <laughs> Somebody asked me at I, on the campus asked me if I wanted to be on. Remember Warati Tomo? Of with, course, I remember right? Warati Tomo. So, so I, they had this show, which I'm sure you've seen. Remember, they had uh, Naruhodo Zanipon, which you know, big show. And and Warati Tomo made this little skit called Naruhodo Z Z Japan. No, no, it was not, the, the the successful one was Naruhodo mm -hmm. Zawardo. The world, right? yes, yes. And then and then Warati Tomo made this little skit called. Uh, and they would have three gaijins on and uh, and then they would ask him stupid questions right and it was a clown show like you said you know that's mm -hmm. what they expected so the first show I was on I think I was on twice um, obviously I wasn't very good at it um, I had Dave Spector <laughs> and Kent Delicat on with me and and uh, of course they went on to fame and fortune and I just became a, a lawyer but <laughs> But I'll never with a, best, with a best selling book. Oh, well, said, come on. Thank you. But uh, I, uh, so Dave, uh, I'm sorry, Kent Delicat was very nice, but he was clownish on the show. But he would, in person, he was nice. Dave, right out of the gate, I thought, who, who is this guy? The first thing he said to me was, he's like, where, where are you from? And, and I said, I was from Idaho. He said, oh, let, let me make you feel at home. And he stood up and went like this. Like you're slapping a horse, right? Sorry, sorry. No problem, no problem, no problem. And uh, and then the, the guy comes in. He's interviewing us. He's like, you know, what are your aspirations, right? Shodai wa doshimasu. And uh, I said, well, I, 
I, I want to become a lawyer. My father was a small time, small town lawyer. And are you uh, the only child? No, there are four of us. There's four two of us. lawyers in the family. Okay. Two lawyers among the children. Are you, wait, where, where are you ranking? Oh, uh, third. You're third. third. Wait, no, give me the rank real quick. So my older sister, elder sister, my older brother, me, and um, my younger brother. So your brother became a lawyer as well? My younger brother did, yeah. My so there's only one girl? The only one girl, yeah. The daughter? Yeah, she's an actor slash writer. I was going to say, she probably became a princess, because I'm sure your dad had treated well, her. Well, there right. was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was that <laughs> issue. Um, but, uh, but I said I, I want to become a lawyer, because I saw my father do a, he defended an indigent man in a murder trial and uh, and uh, when I was in junior high and he pulled me out of school he asked me if I wanted to watch the trial and I said sure and um, and I went and watched it. it was better than Perry Mason or any you know uh, mo movie or TV show it was like slap in the table Your you know, mis yeah yeah objection <laughs> mistrial and all this stuff and he won self-defense he won um, and um, now how old were you then 13 well, no, but did you do the same thing with your brother? I mean, no, I don't think so. Uh, but I was just really showing an inordinate interest in his practice, and uh, so he took me, and, and and that was it. I was like, I want to become a lawyer. Anyway, I I said to the guy at what the who asked, you know, what are your aspirations? And I said, I want to become a lawyer, and uh, and Dave rolls his eyes and says, Oh, how original! It's like, dude, I just met you. What what? <laughs> Why are you dissing me right out of the? And, and he be, he friended me the other day on Facebook. I thought it was kind of funny. And you know, but did it, you accept it? I did. Okay, I okay. did. You but said. I did. But it, Lance, it's like, you know, f f what is it? Fifty-one years later, or is that You're right? Still no, Forty-one about years later, I'm like, God, what a douchebag that guy. And I saw him on the train station once, the Shinkansen in Osaka or something, and he walked out and he's got his hair dyed. And he's in, the, in the blue contacts, in the, in the day he used to wear blue contacts too. And he's looking around like, who's gonna notice me kind of thing, and it's like, dude. Did you stand up and say, I know who you are. Did you say, I know who you are. Bitch slap your ass. <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's funny how these things stay with us, right? And then he went Doesn't on, but you know, I have to give credit where credit is due. His Japanese is amazing, you know, and, and he went and he on. And he sticks with it. He, he sti and, and <laughs> I've heard his commentary on various things, and he's somewhat contrarian, which I like. He pushes back. He's like, well, actually, that's not true. And his analysis is actually, you know, sometimes pretty sound. So I really have to give credit where credit is due. But, I just, but even at the time, you know, he was super young like I was. He was <laughs> saying that he was, I guess, fake it until you make it, but he was saying he was a producer from, ho from Hollywood, right? <laughs> yeah, okay. And why are you in Japan? But uh, <laughs> I'm Japanese. I'm what up, <laughs> yeah, right, Working right. on a big project, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wait, wait. This is not the kind of podcast I thought. <laughs> wait, wait, hold it. Sorry. This is nice. No, you mentioned I like him. <laughs> I like that. I did, I did, I did. I remember. <laughs> to your surprise. You didn't know that, but I, yeah. yeah. That so, is interesting. Fascinating guy, but yeah, no, it was not an auspicious start. <laughs> no, it, was, it wasn't at all. Huh? And you know, you know how these things are. I'm sure he doesn't remember it at all. He, of course, because it wasn't important to him. It didn't happen to right. him. Didn't happen to him. <laughs> it didn't happen but for to me, him, I was like, you <laughs> the fuck, I remember you forever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I was just telling my last guest that I used to be very vengeful. And I wanted to see people get their upcoming. Yeah. While right. I'm, well, I don't want it to be after they die. Yeah. I don't care. I want to see it happen. Now. Yeah. I want exactly. to see it now. I want to be witnessing it. I yeah. want to be sitting front stage when it happens to them. Yeah. That's it. That's interesting. Well, it's funny. I, I was that way too. And, and when I finally got over myself, <laughs> mm -hmm. it was such a burden. Being yeah, with, you you know, carry that all the time. Yeah. You just move on <laughs> now and say, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. then you realize it's really more their problem than it is my that's problem. That's right. That's right. right. Anyway, yeah, I didn't do it by any favors by not turning on the air conditioning here. I'm getting a little warm. Yeah, me maybe too. maybe laugh too much. <laughs> Dave Spector. Oh, Spector song. Yeah. So, Mark, you you were born in Idaho. Yes. Did you live there until you left? I mean, I mean, of course you lived there. No, too, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm sorry. So let me back up. So okay. my father, uh, so he was a uh, uh, in ROTC, and the military paid for his college and law school, okay. but he had to serve. Okay. This is in the 50s. Right. And, uh, and they sent him to Alaska where he was in the Judge Advocate General Corps. Um, and uh, he had a 
wide variety of jobs, but I remember hearing one of his jobs was whenever there was a death in the military, he had to go investigate it. Um, but um, so I was born in Anchorage, okay. Alaska, and then um, after I was one year old, we moved back to because he was still in the military. Home. He was still in the military. How did he retire from the military? He was only in one tour of duty, and then he moved back to Idaho and in um, the army. The army, yes, correct. I mean, so he was okay. So d did he enlist with the army? Because he was an officer, obviously. He was an officer. He was obligated to serve because the ROT, they had paid for his college. His college. So he school. had to do. So he did eight years actually, but four years were in college. Correct. Actually, right. that's, that's right. What he did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he did eight years, but. Yeah, the four, first four were just to ed be educated. That's right. Then he had to give them four. He had to give them four. Yeah. Exactly. And he thought about staying, and he often would say, you know, if I'd stay, I'd be out by now. And, and still have, have a pension. pension. Right, exactly. But he did fine for himself. I bet he did. I bet he did. Um, and uh, I, like California, you know, Idaho was um, very different then. Mm -hmm. There was only half a million people in the entire state. And, right. and a big chunk of the state, like California, is wilderness area. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up hunting and fishing and skiing. And That's why you love um, fly fishing now. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, so it was a huge part of my life. Now this- You would you, you, you put down there, I write to <coughs> fish and I fish to write. Yeah, 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 yeah basically <laughs> that's true. Yeah, they feed on each other. Isn't that interesting? And there's interesting. a lot of authors who, uh, were or are fishermen like Hemingway was a huge fisherman mm -hmm. and Zane Gray was a huge fisherman. Was your father a writer by any chance? No, he, was, he wasn't a writer. Your mother? Uh, no. My sister. Yeah, she she wrote? Avant-garde uh, stuff and, she, and a lot of screenplays and um, scripts for plays. But she's, is she acting as well? She was. Yeah. Okay. Now she's mostly writing. Someone that we'd know or was she? No, no, but she did work on uh, the move, the play and then the movie Boys Don't Cry. Oh. She worked on that script quite a bit. Yeah, um, that's with the girl that was a lesbian, right? Uh, wasn't she? Was I she think actually? She was she, trans. She was tra no, but I think she was a woman, but she was trying to act like a man. Correct. So she yeah, was exactly. a yeah. So she was a lesbian. Yes, correct. Yeah, I don't think they even talked about trans then. Yeah, it might have been. But that's the big thing now. Androgyny or something they said at the time. I, can't I think remember. so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, right. But um, remember, Joan Jett had a had a song from the 1970s, I think late 70s, called Androgyny. No, I don't know. And it's, it's all, it could have been written yesterday. You know? Is that so, right? Yeah, it's an amazing song. Okay. Actually. Wow. So, okay, so you, so you born in Alaska, then you went to Idaho? Correct. And I, and I grew up in Idaho until I was 16. Until you were 16. And right. I was, then I was a Rotary Club exchange student in high school. Well, tell me, first Japan. of all, what kind of kid were you when you were growing up? Were you more academic? I'm thinking about elementary, <coughs> junior high. Were you more <laughs> academic or were you more sports-minded? I was more academic. I was not particularly good at sports. I did a lot of music. Um, well, played some as football, what, what, but... What music? Oh, I played saxophone and yeah. whoa, whoa, uh, clarinet. Whoa, whoa. What, what kind of... Well, you played so, or you can play... I want you to so, play one, you can play them all. So in clarinet... Um, That's very difficult. That was in, um, you know, more of a traditional just a uh, band playing classical music, for lack of a better way to, to, to describe it. And then the sax, we had something called the Lab Band, which was a jazz band. And um, uh, that was like an extracurricular thing. We met early in the morning. You played alto? No, uh, it was tenor. tenor. You played tenor? Tenor sax, okay. yeah. That's what I'm doing now. Oh, is that right? I Great fun, right? Before you, uh, I listened to someone, you know, you, everyone thinks they can play sax when they get one. And I did play at a club the other night, about a couple of weeks ago, one of the people I had on the podcast said, I can get you, sure, let's come there. No one's going to be there. Packed house. <laughs> <laughs> do you know, do you know, um, Kamikaze, Kamasami Khan? Kamasami no. Khan? Mm -hmm. Okay, he used to be a, a very famous DJ in Hawaii, and he lives in Japan, and we're around the same age. And he was there, and he's the one person you'll hear when I go up. Get him, Lance! I get up to play the one song. <laughs> <laughs> Shiny sax, the best Yamaha makes. Been playing for four years. No one is supposed to be there. Almost came in my Lululemon, just real casual. They were all dressed up. 
Everyone's in the audience. She had, they did two sets before I come on. I'm setting this up for you, Mark. Two <laughs> sets before I come on. And she kept on saying, we have a special guest. I'd have to be, you know, the best sax player. I can't name some of them, but like, like I don't know if you know Huge Groove or, these guys are good, but that's what she was building me up to. And I said, I, I've never played in front of anybody. It's like singing in the shower. I sound good to me, but I know I sound horrible. You know. She says special guest, you're looking around. I'm Who's looking around, yes. And everyone's <laughs> looking at me because they know they haven't seen me in the club before. I get up and they think I'm going to sing because she didn't say what I'm going to uh, do. Oh, 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 I get up man. and I take the sax and I start to play. Well, if you come from up north, Canada, and you're used to seeing moose that have been hit by a semi-trailer. <laughs> And he's taking his last breath. Right, right. That's what I sounded like. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. You know, so <laughs> it was horrible. It was between I you and a, I. I had a similar experience <laughs> in uh, junior high. Um, well, this is junior high. You're young. You can overcome that. You remember we? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm fair enough. Overcome it. Fair enough. No, too, no, no, no. I'm you, traumatized for people life. People don't now. remember this stuff though. But I remember. <laughs> I remember, so you remember, you know, there were dances in school. Yeah, yeah, you had the school hops, you had the sock yeah, hops and yeah, stuff like that exactly. in the gym. And yeah. it's like Sadie Hawkins or whatever. Okay. Anyway, there was a <laughs> band that um, would, pl a live band. You, usually it's, you know, right. they just play in records. But, right. but there was a live band made up of kids from the high school um, that would play. And they would play contemporary stuff. Um, so... Uh, you know, Chicago. And, right, right, right. And uh, so <coughs> they lost their flute player for Color My World, you know, by Chicago. And uh, they're like, uh, Weeks, you know, you play clarinet. Why don't you, <laughs> why don't you come and play the flute? They called you Weeks then? Yeah. They, everyone went by last name? Yeah, it was last name, yeah. Why, wait, wait, this is, because your, fa your father wasn't in the service then, but it was just a thing. Everyone liked just to call thing. everyone. Yeah, a small, a small area, everyone knew each other, so we yeah, went yeah. by the family names. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, there's a lot of that, yeah. And particularly if, they, you know, your, your close friends would call you by your first name. But, okay. Um, and, and it's like, you, you, you play clarinet, you know, you're, you're pretty good. Why don't you come and play this, the flute solo for Color by My World? And I'm like, I have no idea what I'm doing, but okay. It was so bad. I was so bad. I, I, it was, it was just, and you know, you're in junior high and you just want to end it because you feel like you, I mean, I, with social media would make it far worse, I'm sure, but you'd think all your friends are there and nobody remembers like the next day. But you right? remember, you'll no, never remember, forget, right? you'll never forget. Kind of like the Dave Spector thing. <laughs> Sorry to keep on that. I'm not bitter. <laughs> it wouldn't hurt to see something similar happen or something, no. But that's what makes us who we are. I was going to tell you the analogy I use is this. When I was teaching my sons to ride their bicycle, and they were riding, it was okay. That's not when they learned how to ride. It's when they were riding, looked back like that, <laughs> and fell over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next time they got up, they were riding with purpose. Yeah. They got to find out what a scab is and all these other things. Yeah. They find out. Kids nowadays can't find out any of that because everything's protected with rubber and they have the training wheels on forever and then the bikes can Soft. have a gyro on them so they can't fall over. Well, and they're not forced <laughs> to compete, you know. Oh, everyone gets an award. Everyone I was a PE award. teacher at the American school and I wouldn't go along with that. I said, no, I'm not going to teach my kids. Teach these kids something that isn't true. Because when they get outside, they're going to find out you most definitely have to compete. So why would I set them up to fail? Uh, that's not fair. Everyone gets no reward. <laughs> Yeah. Just for showing up. No, yeah. I don't think so. No. Yeah, no, I agree. I think they've stopped that now. God, yeah. I hope so. But now they're going into the transgender, teaching them about that. So the little kids have to decide. Have you decided what you are yet? Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. Why like, do like that to the kids? Like they understand conceptually. I know. Why do that to our kids? Let them be kids first. It was horrible finding out Santa Claus didn't exist. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how traumatized I was. No Easter Bunny? All these things around here, yeah. you mean there's no bunny laying these things? Yeah. You and my son. <laughs> so we defrauded our son so badly, the poor kid, that um, uh, he was believing in Santa until sixth grade. And um, my kids. He, he grew up in, well, he went to school in Scarsdale in Westchester, which is predominantly Jewish. Wait, 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 hold um, on. I thought you lived your life, your wife's not Japanese? No, she is. She is, yeah. 
but we spent a lot of time in New York. Okay. Uh, he's, he was born in Japan right. and was here basically th into second grade, and then we moved. Okay. Uh, did you keep him in Japanese school while he was here? Or just uh, yes, we did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he was back in Japan during fifth grade, um, and then also went to, he ended up going to ICU, which actually surprised me because he went to ICU from, from New York, and yeah. I thought he was going to go to a uni U.S. university. That must make you feel good. Yeah, that was. Yeah, that you was, told some good that stories that or something. Nice. Well, you just told me you had a great time there. Somebody said, "Hey, I'm going to call my dad." Went. Well, you know how it is. I think he felt more at ease there and more, Didn't he? you know, um, yeah, right. more kids like him, kind of thing. Um, and he's a, is he a lawyer now too? No, he's a um, consultant. Okay. Yeah, he went to the dark side, <laughs> so to speak. <laughs> I thought lawyers worked hard, but. Consultants, <laughs> it's crazy. Really? Yeah, it's just crazy. Okay. What kind of consulting does he do? Oh, um, he consult. He does a lot of work on. It's a. It's a good question. He does a lot of work with car manufacturers in connection with um, self-driving AI. Um, mm. So I don't know what kind of consulting you would call that, but strategic consulting. Well, then I should we, know then this, but. What did he graduate with? What kind of degree did he graduate with? Economics. Economics. Yeah. Because it seems like he's, okay, so he's not in the, the manufacturing side or anything. He's actually helping, he, he's explaining what it is that What their business plan what should their, okay, be. Okay, I understand. Right, okay, so and uh, uh, so, as he said, consultants basically tell companies what they already know but don't have the will to do. Okay. Um, and then they can blame it on the outside. Well, we've got to do this because, you know, Outside consultant told us we should do this. He actually worked for a Japanese manufacturer for four years before he went into consulting, mm -hmm. and was the Hida Shayin and went through the different departments, you know, finance and marketing, and mm -hmm. um, so which was a very, I think, good foundational experience before he became a consultant. So tell me this, Mark. After you finished junior high school, and you were 16, you said when you left Idaho. Correct. You came 16. here. 16. Yep. Why did, you, why did you decide to do that? Uh, what that? Because you weren't, you weren't, you weren't, you weren't mm -hmm. in the sports, right. but you played some sports. Obviously. I played football, yeah. Did you have the height? Did you get the height quick? I was super skinny, but I was tall. How yeah. tall are you? 6'3". You're 6'3". Your father? Was. He was 6'1". And your mother? 5'5". Five, five. <laughs> really short, really? Yeah. yeah. So it's your father's side? Yeah, it was my father's side. Oh. Okay, all right. What about your brother, your siblings? Are they all tall? Uh, yeah, all three of them. Mm -hmm. And your sister? Yeah, she's tall too, 5'10". Wow, okay, yeah. that's my mother's height. And she eight. played basketball, and my brothers both played basketball. Okay. My younger brother was sh actually didn't really get his height until senior year of high school. That's how it was. I he was really you know. um, disappointed that he hadn't grown like, like Stan and I had. Um, did but he get Did he get enough height? But then he <coughs> he just shot up like five or six inches in one year. <coughs> wow. So um, he was super skinny too. My yeah. my older brother was the most athletic by Is far. It? Your younger yeah. brother? Yeah. Well, he had to keep. He had, look, he had you two older ones. He said, "I can't walk in their footsteps, so I got to do something they're not well, doing." Well, <coughs> so my younger brother was very <coughs> athletic, but my older brother was sort of off the charts in football, baseball, basketball. You mean in a good way? Good way, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, very, so bo he did boxing. You found that out how? Well, <laughs> my father had us do boxing <laughs> together, and, and I was always actually bigger okay. than he was. Because um, you guys are just a year apart. Just really, a year, so yeah. like 18 months. 18 months, right. But he was um, blisteringly fast. You know, I was always thinking about stuff. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, it's, What's that Mike Tyson quote? Everybody has a plan until they first get hit kind of thing, right? Well, if I do this, I'd, and he'd just come in, <laughs> just this blur. <laughs> and, so I was like, oh, well, maybe boxing's not for me, you know? And then, but, but everything he did, he was just a natural. It was just mm -hmm. like, okay, this is how you throw the baseball, this is how you hit it, this is how you do football, you know? This is, and, and he was great at shooting baskets. And, and you said, well, what about this book? Have yeah, you guys been yeah, yeah. Book, so, yeah. What if I stand at this angle and shoot like this, you know? And he's like, just shoot the ball, right? And he, of course he was right, but I couldn't, you know, I couldn't stop overanalyzing it. I think that was part of the problem. Well, that's why you're such a good writer. 
Oh, well, thank no, you. No, that's why you're such a good writer. That's I haven't even read it yet, but the reviews are fantastic. Oh, well, thank book. you. Thank they're going to probably make them. This is going to be another. They, 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 <coughs> they, they made it equal to Blade Runner. They said very similar to Blade Runner. It does have that feel. Does uh, it, is it, were you thinking about that when yes, you wrote it? Yes, I absolutely was. Well, you know how Tokyo looks at yes, night, right? Yes, that's right, when, you're, that's when you right. have the views. Uh, oh. Tokyo Tower, and, yes. and, or if you're in Shinjuku, right. right? And so that Blade Runner uh, theme has been in my mind since it came out, right? You really liked it. And, and, and remember, this was in the 1980s when America was very paranoid and Japan was like this, and you know, the 21st century is going to be the Japan century. And I don't know if you remember those commercials where they had the woman in the black kimono, and it was just kind of this ominous, you know, Japanese. Um, Tinny music, and uh, you know the Japanese company is going to own 50% of all patents in the world by 2000, and and you know Americans are fat and lazy and stupid and and can't build cars. Remember, remember um, that great movie um, uh, RoboCop? Yes, and uh, yes, came out in '85 or something like that. And there was a car in that. Uh, one of the great things about that movie was the comedy, uh, or the, and particularly the juxtaposition of the violence in the comedy. But right. there was a car they had. It was called the SUX 2000, the Sux 2000, <laughs> right? Because at the time, everybody was talking about how much American cars it sucked, sucked. <laughs> and Jap how great <laughs> Japanese cars were. So, so Blade Runner, when it came out, you know, basically. America and, and Japanese economy and society had sort of blended, amalgamated, and become one, right? And, um, and that's always sort of s stuck with me. And it sort of happened. I mean, it sort of didn't, but it sort of happened if it you did, look at how did, close the two societies Most are. Two countries. Yes. So that I, I kind of wanted that look and feel. So and I actually saw that movie again recently, and it's held up it does. amazingly well. It most well. definitely does. I love sci-fi. I love. Tell me this, Mark. Did you think? I mean, when you were, what kind of books did you read when you were younger? Science fiction. Yeah, I read science fiction. Uh, and did you watch a lot of TV too? Did you watch oh, Star yeah, Trek? Yeah, of and course. You love Star. You a Trekkie? Yeah, yeah. Every. Mm -hmm. I remember. So probably I've seen every original Star Trek episode at least at least five times, right? Because they remember yeah. reruns. I have, yeah. the no, I have the whole set. Yeah. And then uh, Star Trek: The Next Generation came out, and yes. I watched all those. Mm. Of course, and then all the movies, and so yeah. And now I'm watching Picard, and yeah. um, some of them. I'm getting kind of tired. I didn't like the station. Um, what was the one they did? Oh, Generation Deep Space Nine. Yeah, Deep Space Nine. Yeah. yeah. I said, well, what the, what's the point of that? Come on, I move, go somewhere. It's nice we're out in the middle yeah, of space, but that's uh, just didn't that do was it for exactly me. my feeling. I said, what's the point? I mean, it's come like, on, I can do that here. Yeah. <laughs> it was a military base. Yeah, military base. A military base. <laughs> Every now and then, get me out in space and go to another planet. What are you exploring? Yeah, yeah exactly. what are you exploring? Nothing. That was exa I, I, I didn't I, do it. I, I didn't never really did it watch it. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't. It. I couldn't tell you. I forgot. I just know the one black guy was over it. I said, <laughs> it's typical. He gets to stay in one place. He can't he doesn't get to explore anything. He's sat there, a caretaker, a big warehouse. <laughs> right, right. The one character I did like was that guy who... Um, the, not him? The one oh, that, well that guy! But the guy who could like transform—I forget what is. Oh, he could change shapes. Yeah, I th and I, did I see him? Wait, he had it? this. Uh, his natural form was kind of this. Well, it was humanoid, but right. it was this sort of like almost like his face was melting. But right. he was a shapeshifter. He could okay, change. Okay, okay. Um, that was the one character that I okay, thought was yeah. kind of interesting. Something's out of the normal. Yeah, but oh, wow. then I, after law school, wait. First of all, so you at school you went through that then. What made you decide to become a lawyer? Because of your dad? See that case, my dad. that one case, that one case? So I watched that case and it was awesome. And, uh, and he won and I was just so shocked. And it was, a, he had a successful practice at the time. He'd started a law firm and it had grown and, um, for the time, you know, and for the place. It was a pretty big firm. Um, but there were no public defenders in Idaho because it was such a small population. As a result, all of the lawyers had to do a certain amount of pro bono work. They, they, it, it was required. And uh, so this was like his annual project. And they, they gave you a little stipend. Was that his pro bono that he won? That pro was bono? his pro bono. And he and really helped this guy out. Yeah, well the guy was indigent. He was an yes, older guy right, with a tracheotomy. Right. And, right. and he lived, kind of a fascinating case, he lived with this much younger Native American man who worked 
I can't remember where he worked. But long story short, they got drunk one night and the older guy shot the younger man in the eye with a twenty two. Well, and then the question was, you know, was the younger man threatening him? Did he kill him? Oh, yeah, he killed him. Okay, right. Yeah. Because people uh, have been shot like that and not die. Yeah, no, it was right. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, and they had, you know, they had the photos of the crime scene. Of course, this is the 70s, so it was black and white and, mm-hmm. and different witnesses. And, and, and they had witnesses that come in, came in and talked about how the younger man was abusive to the older man. And, and also they had to demonstrate... The defense had to demonstrate that the older man couldn't escape because there was a, uh, at the time, and under Idaho law, there was a requirement that you, um, before using deadly force, that you make a reasonable attempt to escape harm, and uh, only if you can't can you use you know deadly force. Um, they were in the bedroom together, and supposedly the guy was throwing a big knife into this, into the foot of this. Um, cabinet, um, or dresser doors, excuse me, and then saying, you know, basically I'm going to kill you. And, but it was just the two of them, so who knows what went on, that was the thing. Um, but the back and forth with the prosecutor, between the prosecutor and my dad, was was quite interesting. And um, I thought, this is just so cool. And, and then, after I got to Japan, my host father, I was up in Aomori, for some reason, but again, um, we didn't. Why did you come to Japan? First of all, your father. So um, your father had never <coughs> been here, had he? No, no. So, so what happened was, it always comes back um, for for me to, you know, you 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 make decisions based on emotion, and then you justify them using reason, right? And uh, we had this. My father was a Rotarian, and he was chair of the local Rotary Club at one point. And we had this exchange student from India, Odette Lobo staying with us and she was a what they call a rotary scholar going to a local college and she was a Christian she was an Indian Christian and she ended up going to what's called Northwest Nazarene College very conservative Christian college and she lived with us right? and she walked on water in my view you know I was like 13 and she was 18 19 oh, I was like, oh my god Goodness, yeah. you know this is the woman I want to have my children and uh, um, and she said, you know, Mark, Idaho's nice, but you should broaden your horizons. And She started talking to yeah, you. Yeah, she said, you and should you go. Were, I was like, were you drooling? How about India? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Calcutta, which is where she was from. Um, and uh, I, and she, she was just fabulous. And um, uh, so I said, okay. So I looked into it and I signed up with Rotary and took the test and they had an interview process. I had to go to Salt Lake, I had to fly to Salt Lake City, which was a big deal going from Idaho. I was like, oh, I'll get on an airplane. And uh, then they said, okay, you're in, uh, where do you want to go, you know? And I thought, well, um, going to Australia would be cool because I love marine biology, I love the ocean, I'd love to see the Great Barrier Reef. But I'd met people who'd gone to Australia and they'd come back and they just had an Australian accent, but really it was like going, to, I mean, no offense to Australians, but it, it was like, it was, you're just going to another English speaking, you know, Western country, right? And I thought, you know, it's a whole year, which of course at that stage of your life is a really long period of time. Why don't I go someplace completely different, right? And I saw- Without anybody pushing you to do this? No, no. And I saw uh, the movie, um, the Tea House of the August Moon, which is uh, a post-World War II movie about this American soldier who goes to this little island and he's overseeing something. I don't remember why. It's with Glenn Ford. And Marlon Brando, wait for it, plays the Japanese guy. I think I remember this. I'm not making this up. I know, no, I know. He's a skinny Marlon Brando, but still tall. Yes. And they pinned his eyes back. I remember it. I remember remember the movie. In this, you can't imagine that this happened. But I saw it. That's right. And there was this lovely the act. The Japanese actress was absolutely just gorgeous, and she was running around doing stuff. And Glenn Ford's falling in love with her, and I was like, Japan, go to Japan. (laughs) Japan's it. And uh, I knew nothing about Japan. I knew nothing about Asia, let alone Japan. I mean, in my mind, is like Hong Kong's the capital of Japan, right? And you're only 16 that, years old now, right? Uh, I was still 
You said you came here at 16. 14, right? but I came here at 16. 16 but when right? I was deciding. You were 14 you, you, when you were deciding. Yeah, I had to decide, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, this is when you go, right? And, and Which I was two I, years later. Yeah, or a year and a half. Okay. So maybe right around 15. Right. And, uh, and I said, okay, I want to go to Japan. And my parents were like, wow, that's, that's a long ways to go. And, you know, um, and I said, no, but, you know, I'm going to learn another language and Japan economy is like this. And this is me justifying what I want to do, right, with reason, what I want to do for emotional. And the year right. again is? 1970, at the end of 76 when I decided and 78 when I came. You came here Fall of 78. Okay. August of 78. Okay, all right. Um, and then I came here, and my host father came to Tokyo on business, and uh, he worked with Toto, the you know sash company, sliding mm -hmm. door company. And um, he said he was in this meeting, and there was this international lawyer, you know, Kokusai Bengoshi at the meeting. And um, I was a James Bond fan at the time, yeah. and like every young man, um, and. This Kokusai Bengoshi, this international lawyer, spoke both Japanese and English and advised both sides on how to put together this joint venture. And he knew the laws of the U.S. and Japan. And, you know, he really helped out both sides. I thought, that's it. That's what I want to be. I don't know what that is, but it sounds really cool. And it's probably the closest I'm going to get to international man of mystery. I mean, it's got international in the name, right? international lawyer. So this was my reasoning, right? So, I, okay, this is, this is it, international lawyer. Uh, and that's what I decided. At to sixteen. Do. Yeah. Yeah. And you never let up. And you, it, never, you never had any doubts about it after no, that? No, I had any? doubts. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you did. Law you think about when I was <laughs> You know, it's one of those things where if you knew how much work was involved, <laughs> you you'd you thought never of. do it. Right. <laughs> well you might like my last question, but go on. So but then you I remember being a junior associate in New York, you know, slaving away in the library on a Memorial Day weekend when it's beautiful out, right? Right. And I've got to get some memo done by Tuesday morning, right, the day after the holiday, and thinking, this sucks, right? Now, it did get better as I got more senior, um, but yeah, I would have never done it had I known what was involved, the, mm -hmm. the drudgery. Well, right? then why do you, you weren't able to talk your younger brother out of it either. No, in fact, I think, but I think he saw my trajectory. And so, well, he, but he stayed in the states, right? He stayed in the states, but he saw the trajectory of my career. You know that it was actually going somewhere. And then he actually was working as a stock trader at a trading firm, and he hated it. And he realized, well, but at least with a lawyer, you know, a, a law degree you can, or license, you can. It opens up so many options, right? You can go in house. You can start a business. You can become, start your own firm. And he liked that. Mm -hmm. And he'd obviously seen what our father had done. Um, and your father's still around during the, did, did, was your father alive when you became a lawyer? No, he, he, oh, he died in a traffic that. accident oh. uh, during, so. in 1981, at the end of my first year in college here in Japan. So you were 20? I was 19. 19, 19. oh yeah. wow, that must have been hard. Yeah, that was tough. That was tough, because, wow. um, you know, as you get older there are things that you wish you could, you could share, say to your, share with them and share with them and, and go, Dad. I, you were absolutely right about this and this and this and this, right? Were you close with your father? Yeah, we we fished and hunted a lot together, and um, he was very good in that way. He coached, you know, sports teams that I was not good on. But and your mother still mm -hmm. with us? Okay. How old is she now? Eighty-seven. And Eighty-seven. Going strong. That's good. What's she doing? Uh, she's. Living her life. She has a farm in Idaho. Um, the same place that you were? No, we grew up in town, but but my parents bought a, a farm outside of town, mostly because my father liked, liked to hunt there, and then he would uh, rent it out, lease it out to farmers to farm it. So it's quite a few acres then? Uh, it was about, it's about 100. Yeah. But um, uh, after my father died, Years later, my mother remarried, and then they built a house out on the farm. Okay. And they had a f always had a farmer farming it. But um, her, my stepfather just died at 89 mm -hmm. um, in 2020. And she decided to stay, and she's still working with the farmer, and she's got like a little habitat that she manages. And what did they have on the farm? Did they, have uh, they grew um, mostly wheat. Sometimes potatoes and sometimes sugar beets. Did they have any livestock? 
No livestock on. At all, okay. No. Um, had a lot of geese and pheasants coming in and out. Yeah, of course. And yeah, sometimes yeah. they live right across the street from a National Wildlife Refuge, so mm -hmm. they'd get deer coming over to the house and coyotes. And but you could shoot. Wait, wait when, what could you hunt? Uh, you can hunt when they come off the refuge. Okay, so you just kind of uh, have food lined up along. No, <laughs> you can't do that. You can't bait them. You can, and actually for the deer, I think... You don't have to bait them. There's not a lot of food. For the deer, you, you yeah. can only use a bow in that area. Oh, you is that right? You can't use a rifle. You can't use a rifle. Yeah, okay. because, and the problem is, with all these people moving into Idaho from California, Washington, <laughs> and Oregon, right. etc., the, so when I left the town, it was 18,000. Now it's over 100,000. So, you know, m my mom's farm is about to be surrounded by subdivisions mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that are all growing out to her. Wow. Um, I think people are still hunting out there, but boy, those days are numbered. Yeah, yeah. I remember when that happened in California. I used to, um, when I was young, we always started off with a BB gun, then I had a 410 automatic. Exactly. And then I went to 12 gauge. Oh, you went straight to 12. Yeah, after 410. 20, after 410. Yeah. I didn't do the 20 or the 16. They even had 16. You remember? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's right. See? It was 410. It was, um, it was 410, 20, 16, and then 12 gauge. And the 12 gauge was the kicker. How old were you when you got your 410? I was. 10 or 11, oh, and I was quick, well, young. I was quick, you know, because you're taught, we had to walk, my, my uncle taught me, and my father taught me, my father taught me something different, but they taught us, and I only had the shotgun, and I'd hold it like this, and I'd be here, and I was always on safety, and I'd always have my finger yeah, on right, safety, right. and click it off, and, and right. I was quick, and the problem was, when I went from the 410 to the 12 gauge, and we were only ha hunting cottontail and sometimes jackrabbits, mm -hmm. 410, I had to hit them right away. Right. Because you had a small, just a little shot, you know, you had very few, it doesn't matter what you used. You had to hit them quick, so I couldn't let them go too far. When I first had my 12 gauge, there was nothing left. Yeah, right. Because I'd go, boom, and right, you just right, see right. a puff, right. nothing yeah, right, but right, fur right. over right. <laughs> yeah. So I had to learn to let them run and yeah. give them some leeway and aim in front poof, and yeah, take them yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I was blowing them all apart. I was, uh, going, I was feeling so bad because it, it was horrible. I've done that special move before. It was horrible. It's just <laughs> puff of feathers. <laughs> yeah, I hunted. Yeah, and I did that too. I did pheasant too. And I remember you'd be on the line or the alfalfa or whatever, and the person over you, and you get somebody that doesn't know how to hunt, and you're standing at the end, and they follow the birds right over to where you are. And then you're going, oh, no. Yeah, and, no. And you have to get all those little pellets on the back. Yeah. And hope they don't oh, penetrate. Oh, man. Hope they don't penetrate. You've had that happen? Yes. I've had oh. it rain down. Yeah, right. Yeah. You say, okay, here it goes. Oh, yeah, you cover your neck and stuff and just hope. Scary. Oh. Sheesh. Yeah, some people, I remember. They don't have a clue, yeah. They don't have a clue. And there were some people that hunted with the safety off. And once I found they were doing that, I was like, I'm done. Wait, wait. You we had rules. We were like that, too. And then I had the same guy that taught me. Um, it was a neighbor taught me as well. My uncle taught me, and then my neighbor. He had beagles. Hmm. And to hunt with beagles, rabbits, I didn't know they made noise. The beagles? The rabbits. Oh, the rabbits. They would go down in the hole and the rabbit. Oh, right, right, right. And sometimes right, right. the beagles weren't the victors, you know. <laughs> they go down there and they went down the wrong hole. Well, jackrabbits are big. No joke. When you came to Japan and you graduated I, from ICU. I, I came to Japan. I went to high school in Aomori for one year during my junior year. Okay. I returned to uh, the U.S., graduated from high school there, and then I returned to Japan to go to ICU. And the deal with my parents was I would go to ICU for one year, and then I would return to the U.S. to finish my college. And... Uh, but my father died at the end of the year, and um, my mom had, at that time, three children in college and one more going in. And I could s stay here, and you know, back in the day, you could teach English. I also mm -hmm. taught debate um, and did translating. And, and they I paid could, you for teaching debate? Yes. Uh -huh. Where, where, where? where? Um, at, um, it was actually an accounting firm. Okay. You know, this is in the 80s, right? right People. Right, right. Do you remember? Um, well, you're teaching Japanese debate. Te teaching debate to Japanese, right, okay. yeah, um, and um, uh, and I could pay for, you know, my my room and board, and then ICU gave me 
um, a scholarship. You know, so you, you were about here. to say the, the accounting firm Pete and Merrick, or is that who you were talking about? Who? No, you know, it was one of what was the big eight at the time. I think it was Cooper's. Okay. And it was uh, incorporated later on into PwC, you know, Pricewaterhouse right, Coopers. Price Coopers yeah. um, but it was to Japanese people. Mm -hmm. um, and at the time, debate for a short window was all the rage. And because Japanese didn't debate, you know, they did namawashi and, you know, harage and that stuff. So they wanted to learn how the Americans did debate. And I was a debater in high school, right, so okay. I taught that. Wow. Uh, it's, it's part of the, you know, learning English, how to learn English, but right. a little more interesting. So when was your first real job? Did you call it uh, a job? <laughs> uh, It's a good question, depending on how you define it. Um, yeah. I started uh, practicing in 1988. Um, Here? In, in New York. Okay. Out of law school. Were you um, married by this time? I was married, yeah. No, how did we that happen? Uh, we met during college. She was at the same ICU? Yeah, we met at ICU. We were, oh. She was not from ICU, but we were introduced by a mutual okay. friend. Okay. Yeah. Um, right. and, but at, between college and law school, I took a year off and worked for a think tank in Japan. And uh, and to save money for lo for law school, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then then we went to New York in 1985. And New York in 1985 was kind of like New York is now. Um, uh, it was it was dirty. Um, like it is crime, now. Crime you mean was after? higher. Yes, yes. And oh, yes. I went. So there in other words, it got much better in the 90s and That's 2000s. That's when that was under D uh, not Dinkins. Well, it started with Dinkins. Actually, it did start with Dinkins. Dinkins. Yeah, but and he didn't do the job. Rudy 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 before he went, and really changed before he became. A nut job. Yeah, but he really made sure. No, ho I went. I went in the eighties, and it was like chaos. I mean, yeah, right. Exactly. If you saw a body in the road, people would stop. Maybe if, I saw a guy get hit <clears throat> on one of those cross streets. Like I don't know if the hunters, whatever, like this, and he was hit. Goes to the side, and everyone stopped for. A it was like the Dick Tracy movie where the car stopped for a second and then start again. Everyone went on their business. Yeah. After after this guy's hit, I said to my brother, he said, "No, that's all the time." Yeah. What? And and I remember him parking his car. He had a van. There was a car here, and he pushed this car. Yeah, in front. yeah, yeah. And uh, th classic. You, you, how? And you're thinking, you gonna and leave a note? Nothing. No, he did <laughs> both cars. Bam, bam. No, I know. He's in space. <laughs> and gonna be. Well, first of all, you're not gonna leave. You're gonna stay here. They're gonna know who did this. Yeah. Like I couldn't understand that. Then I come back later in the '90s, and I'm saying something's different. Yeah. Because I saw someone Asian going like this, and nobody had hit them, or it, it, you know. And yeah. then I saw a policeman talking with someone. I went, "Wait, no one's honking their horns." No, yeah, there was no news. I said, "It, it was surreal. Very, it was surreal. Very livable." Because when we left, we stayed. We I was a member already, so we used the New York Athletic Club, you know, which is, I think is on 59th and right on the street in front of the um, Central Park. Exactly. But I remember it changed. It was really different. Right, and then right. it got so now it's bad again. Yeah, so it got uh, it can it continued to get better. Bloomberg did a great job. You know, he just made decisions that he thought that. were best for the for the city, and then um, uh, that really progressive guy came in, and um, and then COVID didn't help either, and it sort of all, you know, f has been falling apart for several years, and mm -hmm. and they introduced some progressive. Policies and um, what was that guy's name? I, it's it's um, escaping me now. But um, but hopefully with the new mayor, um, you know things will get better. Mm -hmm. it, I would never bet against New York, um, but it definitely you know it goes like this. But the overall down. trend is upward like yeah. that. The last the last down is higher than the previous up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it goes. Yeah. It, it, right. it, it keeps going. Um, so we'll see, but you know, it's there's a some real challenges now to the economy because during COVID things changed so much with the remote working. So a lot of people don't want to come back to the office, right? So you got all this office space um, open, and there's just not the demand for it that there was right. before. Well, the the prices are still so high; it's hard for anyone to be able to use them practically. So were you thinking about going back to the States? I actually moved back in two th November so 2021. Okay. Yeah. So you're uh, not living in Japan now? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
So you're just visiting, so I'm, I'm, I'm honored. This is oh, nice. no, I'm Thank honored you. to be here. This is nice. Yeah. You're only going to be here until when, April the 4th? April 1. April 1, you said. Yeah. And it's great, uh, it's great to be here. It's so, so nice. to. Oh, that's good. It's like coming home. Well, I'll, listen, before I end the podcast, yeah. Mark, I always like to ask this question. With all the knowledge you have now, if you could magically go back in time and meet the younger Mark, or let's say weeks, <laughs> depending on how close your friends were, what advice would you give him, and how old would he be? Um, I would say uh, focus, figure out how to manage money, and um, which I, I, I later figured it out. I, I focused on, you know, becoming the best lawyer I could be in, in my practice, but. I think there's there's too many people, including some very successful people at their chosen uh, vocation, um, including doctors and lawyers and accountants, who are very good at what they do, but are not good at managing money. And I, I tell my associates this too, when they first come in. Um, you know, obviously you're smart enough to get into this law firm, for example, um, smart enough to get through law school, smart enough to pass the bar. Um, but it's a lot of work and unless you are one of those people who wants to die with you know at your desk and i do know i have partners like that who just love the practice so much but most people you know aren't like that and yet you know notwithstanding that they're making very good money because it comes in you know here and goes out here or it's almost always already accounted for before it comes in you know, they get to be in their 50s and 60s and they have to keep working because they never figured out how to manage money. And so I would tell him to figure that out. Figure out how to manage, meaning saving and investing. I couldn't think of any better advice. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Lance. Thank really you. enjoyed it. I want to thank all of you for watching this podcast. Make sure you press like and subscribe. And never forget, it's all on loan, so continue to reach for the stars because you're too blessed to be stressed.